Okay guys, Mackie with the Outer Circle, and today we have a solo scrub down. Yeah, they're not very common. Um, I probably could have spoken to a few people and got them on the show to join me. And uh, at the end of the day, Cat's off picking a fight with 40k players. Um, Tim is hunting for Squatch in the woods, and it's too much effort trying to get people on to be honest, especially because the recording software isn't working too well at the moment. So. What have I been up to? Um, I wrote a bunch of fluff. I did. I wrote some fluff for my Imperial Fists uh, Legion force. It is a almost like a Black Shields force. So I've gone pretty crazy with the fluff, trying to do something unique for them, and try to keep the Forge World tone. And I'll probably give that its own video later on to describe how I see the fluff making process and um, see what people think of it compare it to what Games Workshop's putting out, maybe. I am uh, working with a person at the moment. We're trying to create the world's worst fluff at the same time. Uh, using all the cliches of 40k, we just want to put it all together and just say, hey, look, look how bad fluff can be. So that'll also be another fun little project. Uh, so, new releases. Oh, let's start with Forge World, because Forge World's got um, one release. Gabriel Angelos. This is the most StarCrafty model Forge Worlds ever put out. The hammer I can probably live with. Its proportions are crazy, but hey, 40K's always had crazy weapons. The one thing that really kills the model is Mr. Potato Head here. I think he looks like Abraham Simpson. I'm thinking like World War II Abe Simpson, Flying Hellfish. Let's see if I can put a little picture up beside him to try and see what he looks like. So, anyway, that's it. That's all Forge Worlds bought out in the last week. Uh, Alright, Games Workshop. Where do I start? Um, these are good. When they bought out Apocalypse, they are oh, about seven, eight years ago now. They also bought out Winebreaker Formations back then, Killshot Formations, whatever. Probably even closer to ten years now that I think about it. Um, but anyway, when they bought that out, the these same boxes were almost half of what they are now in cost. They're about 170 off the top of my head. So yeah, my wage hasn't gone up 50% in the last 10 years. So how come this squad has? I know it just seems a bit silly to me, but this is a luxury product. You don't want your luxury product to be leaping that far ahead of inflation, do you? I don't. I think it would probably be really bad for business. So, what's actually being released here? Well, Codex Space Marines Primaris Edition. $420 of Get Fucked. Why do I say Get Fucked? Look, I don't actually care what it costs. What I care about is the fact that this is supposed to be a living, evolving rule set, okay? If this is a living, evolving rule set, and they I mean, this game is fucked for balance at the moment. 40k is fucked for balance. People are going, oh no, it works in this sense and it works in this sense. No, it's fucked. It's demonstrably fucked for balance. So, they can amend this through their living documents. And this is what people like to point to when you bring up that, you know, this is fucked, this is fucked, this is fucked. They like to go, oh, but we can amend it. We can fix the balance because it's a living rule set. Well, if you've got a living rule set and you bring out $420 hardback codexes. How the fuck is that living? Is Games Workshop going to send a bloke around with some acetone and some ink? He's going to come into your house one day and be like, yeah, I'm here to update your codex and he's going to go through entry by entry and change shit? Of course he isn't. So you're paying 420 for a product that you know is going to be superseded. When's it going to be superseded? I don't know, but we're getting an FAQ every fucking month right now to try and fix the shambles that is 40k. I think the only reason we've even got points in 40k at the moment is because they learnt from Age of Sigma that if they didn't do that, there probably would be a mob of like torch and pitchfork wielding nerds rocking up at Nottingham looking for blood. And so they just did it in the most lazy, half-assed approach possible. So yeah, my advice to anyone, do not go out and buy any of their codexes. Pirate that shit before you buy that shit. Um, you know, obviously, don't just go out. Pirate, I can't legally say that. Get a digital copy. 
That's what we're looking for here. That's the terminology, digital copy. Because the digital copy, they can go in, they can modify it. But if you go out and buy a hardback, you know you're buying a limited time product. And it's only going to be good for however long until they decide they want to change things up again. So please, don't do it to yourself. Don't waste your money. Buy only the essentials you need in hardback, like cards or something like that. Digital, this stuff, it's the way to go. Alright, so other new stuff they've bought out. Uh, Primaris Apothecary and the Primaris Chaplain. Let's have a look at these guys, will we? The Primaris Chaplain looks like an interrogator chaplain. That's kind of cool. Looks like he's got the same sort of pistol as the Reavers do. Um, interesting to note, he looks like he has Fabius Bile's Pimp Stick. The Rod of Torment, I think it's called, on Fabius Bile. Um, also looks like he has an Iron Halo, and not a Rosarius. So, interesting design choice. The ribs look terrible. They look like, they almost look like they were hand sculpted. They just don't look right. Oh well, maybe that's just me being a whinger again, but I think I know what I do and don't like. And, and that's what these scrub downs are. They're not about what everyone likes or everyone thinks, they're what the people doing the show think. We can be wrong. You could be sitting there right now going, Mackie, you're a dickhead. I like that chap when I like his dopey looking rib cage. And hey, if you do, old power to you. Uh, let's look at him in all three dimensions, so shall we? There's definitely a pimp stick, isn't it? Yeah, he's not so over the top. He's much better than the Terminator chap when they released. Um, not too long ago. The Terminator Chaplain, he's really dialed up to 11 for, um, <laughs> for, like, purity seals and shit. Uh, I just want to see. I'll look it up in a tick. But Fabius Bile, I want to compare the pimp sticks. Uh, Primaris Apothecary. This guy I really like. It's just a shame that, uh, like the Chaplain, they're more of the static monopose models. Because I think... Part of what has always made characters great is the ability to customise them, to make them your own. People will come back and buy something again and again and again if they can do lots of things with it. But when you've got static monopose models like this, the incentive to have lots of them, it's just not there. People will just buy one or two and why does it look like he's holding a Tyranid spore mine in his hand? <laughs> I guess it could be Gene Seed, but it definitely looks like a small spore mine. <laughs> Looks like that alien out of the movie Life. Like, it's just going to latch onto his hand or something. <laughs> yeah, I like the model. I do. I quite like the Chaplin as well. I like them both. I just... Why do they have to be monopose? We've gone to plastic. We've gone away from... Like, even metal models weren't one-piece models um, all the time. You could at least change arms and that kind of thing on them. And, you know, why, why have we... I'm holding a metal Chaplin in my hand as I say this. It's like, why have we gone this way? Why... Why is Games Workshop so afraid of allowing people to customise models? Is it because of what happened with Chapter House? Do they not want to have any model where you can change shoulder pads or guns on them? They're like, oh no, no, we don't want to have any aftermarket accessories for our models. It's probably worth noting too that they've gone to a more heroic scale. I mean, Games Workshop stuff is always meant to have been 28mm heroic, but they've gone to like a heroic heroic. Like super heroic. I don't know, what do you call that? Um, but they've gone to a newer scale with Age of Sigma and with the Primaris Marines, where everything's sort of getting bigger. Um, the rumours I hear about upcoming 40k orcs, wink wink, nudge nudge, um, as we know it is the internet and all rumours are true. Uh, Abraham Lincoln told us that. Um, Age of Sigma style uh, rooks coming to 40k. So uh, Gazkull that's going to be bigger than Gilliman is really big guys cult we're talking here like probably the size of a demon prince small demon prince um and his knobs that are coming are going to be sort of the same size as what the current guys cult is so that's the rumor i hear what will actually happen who fucking knows right um yeah doesn't look like you even get spare arms with the apothecary or spare hands so it's literally just he's armed exactly as Exactly as this picture. About the chaplain. 
uh, oh, he's just a single sprue for the whole model. Crazy. Yes, so neither model is customizable in any way, shape, or form. And that's fine, I guess, because that's the rules, but I can't help but feel you've taken something away with your simplification of 40k Games Workshop. Right. Customizing characters was always part of the fun of 40k for me. How you could, you know, it's what I love about 30k. Oh, I'm going to have a siege breaker here. I'm going to arm him with a thunder hammer. And, oh, and I've got a librarian. Oh, maybe I'll go four sacks this time. Maybe I'll go, you know, maybe a four sword next time. And Yeah, you've taken that away from the players. I think that's kind of a poor move. Uh, but, yeah, fabulous, fabulous Bill. That's what I wanted to look at. Fabulous Bill. Oh, he's out of stock. Oh, look at that. Look at that rod of torment. You can't tell me that they aren't inspiring each other. Look, look the, the rod even has little spikes on it. Just like Fabius's. Oh, see, Games Workshop, every time Chaos gets something cool, you've got to give it to the loyalists. You could probably make a really good Fabius conversion using that new apothecary and use this fucking... Oh, but wait, they're snap... Pose monofit models, so you're gonna have to fuck around a bit to make the parts join up. But yeah, you could make a fun new apothecary. Yeah, that new Primaris apothecary. And if anyone should be Primaris apothecary scale, it'd be Fabius, right? He's the one doing all the. Even even the Church and backpack. Like if you could put a couple of extra arms on that um, on this guy here. A couple of extra arms on top, that'd almost be there. This would almost be there. Maybe if you use 30k Eidolon's head. So you'd use this Rod of Torment here. You'd use this Apothecary here. You'd want to give him an extra pair of each of these. Change up a bit of the end on this. Yeah, yeah, see? There you go. We can make a pretty cool Primaris Fabius Bile. Glad... Someone thought of it, because Games Workshop hasn't. Um, Alright, what else have we got? The Primaris Repulsor. Ooh. Let's see. I don't like this model at all. It's like, I don't hate it. I just think this is like right on the borderline, the cusp of being something really cool. And they kind of derped it up a little bit. Why did they derp it up? Uh, the front gun here should have been different... The turret should be a predator turret. Would look much better on it. Uh, also, this thing's way too Starcraft. Why is it Starcrafty? Well, actually, there's a few reasons I want to talk about. First of all, something that's also on the Primaris Aggressors that dropped this last week or so. Guns, guns, guns. We have ten times the firepower. Well, not ten times. We have four times the firepower of most marine miniatures. For some reason, with Primaris Marines and the new Direction Games Workshop's going, we have just filled the fuck up on guns. Everything's got... Like, we can't just have one gun on something. We've got to have, like, three guns on something. And everything has it. We've got a gun on each hand. We've got rockets on the back. And rockets are the new in thing. What like, the last time I saw this many rockets on something, like, this many explosives strapped to a tank, was fucking explosive reactive armor on a T-95. I mean... What are we talking about here? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we've got at least seven rocket launchers of various sizes mounted to the side of this thing. Why? It doesn't need them. Are they smoke launchers? Maybe. They look kind of crap for smoke launchers though. It looks almost like an ammo tin that's storing like mortar rounds or 40 millimeter grenade rounds or something and they've just opened the lid up on the tin <laughs> also why would you have the lid on the top wouldn't you want the lid hanging off the bottom so it doesn't just shut it you know shut while the rockets fire and is that just me using common sense um yeah the single laser cannon turret you've already got the twin laser cannon turret in the hull here or oh, sorry the limited traverse mounting in the hull I really think like a predator turret on top would look much better. Oh, I mean, even this turret's fine as long as you just cut all these fucking rocket launchers off it. I 
And also, why's the Marine got a minigun? This thing is just positively orcish, the amount of firepower it's got on it. It's like a heavy stubber, las cannons, assault cannons, covered in rocket launchers. It's fucking retarded. This tank is a good kit. It's a good kit with a few missteps. Um, I just want to make that clear. Like, I think you get this thing, maybe fuck around with these weird grav plates underneath that look kind of like tank tracks. That's what it's echoing. I think fuck around with those, maybe change them up a bit and um, remove a lot of the extra shit. Because there is a lot of extraneous shit on this model. So remove that and you'll have a perfectly good, viable uh, Hoverland Raider for 30k. So, Also, just the existence of this tank alone, like, I think it's pretty disgusting how Games Workshop has made it so Primaris Marines can't use Land Raiders, uh, Thunderhawks, Mastodons. Like, seriously, they can't use a fucking Mastodon. Dreadnoughts can use a Mastodon. Primaris Marines can't. Like, get the fuck out of here. Like, Contemptor Dreadnoughts can use a Mastodon. And Primaris Marines can't. That is just shameless Games Workshop money grubbing, okay? It's nothing else to say about it. That's exactly what it fucking is. It's disgusting. Um, you know, I know exactly why they did it. We all know why they did it. Why they do it? Because they can get more money out of fucking hobbyists if they make them buy all new tanks for their army. I don't think they're giving enough credit to their fanboys. Your fanboys are so fucking retarded, Games Workshop, they would have gone out and bought these things anyway. You, you know, you just pissed off people by making it that they couldn't use their existing vehicles. I mean, if a Primarch or a Contempted Dreadnought can ride in something, chances are a Primaris Marine could or should be able to as well. So, yeah, that's shame, ding, shame, ding. Um, alright. This fucking thing. This is not terrible. Again, it's an okay design with a few missteps. I want to refer you to Exhibit A, the Leviathan. These things are almost the exact same size as one another. So, um, I am just removing all the extra links up top of the screen right now to make things a bit easier for myself. This thing and this thing are almost, like I said, the exact same size as one another. Why is it that this doesn't work for me, but this does? Well, Things look right on the on the Leviathan. The Leviathan, the weapons are inbuilt. It's got the melter into the hand. The siege core has the melter built in as well in the center. The way the guns tuck into the armor, the way that the rockets almost incorporated into the shell, they all look right. But on this guy, everything looks like they're add-ons, like they've just been slapped on the side, like they're miniature turrets they they stick out from the hull they're not in part of the hull the assault cannon on the arm again it just hangs off it's a big bulky thing that hangs off they've got the walkers out of the matrix uh, the rocket on top again it just sticks out like dog's balls and it doesn't work for me the other thing is the legs it's got this massive body and these funny little legs and on the normal box dread, those little legs kind of worked for some reason. But on this guy, they don't, because they're quite thin in comparison to the body. But then you look at the Leviathan, the Leviathan's legs, they they look beefy, they look chunky, they're armoured. Like the shin is well armoured, the knee, everything sort of overlaps each other and makes like a big ceramite plate. And you can just imagine all these plates sliding in and out of one another as they move. And this guy doesn't. Again, the plates, they seem to be externally slapped on. They don't look right, especially with this ankle ball joint. Like, the ball joints on Contemptors are hidden inside the armour. But the ball joints on this are not. There's no hydraulics here joining the foot, so there's nothing to stop it. Just This foot would just be dangling loosely from it in real life. And, and your brain knows that. And your brain is looking at that and going, that doesn't make sense. You might not have a problem with it as a hobbyist, but your brain does. I guarantee it, your brain is saying, something looks wrong here. And that's what looks wrong. There's, there should be hydraulics coming down. Like, what's a good example I can find of it? 
Um, if I go 40k Imperial Knights, Imperial Knights, there's a good example of it. So let's just find any Imperial Knight. Okay. So on the legs of the Imperial Knight, you see there's the hydraulic cylinders that run down to the pivot plate. So the ball joint is inside a plate that's attached to the hydraulics. And you're like, oh yeah, I can see how that works. I can see how the hydraulics move and allows it to pivot around the ball plate. And But on the, uh, oh, where is it? Here. On this guy, it doesn't have that. It's lacking that one constituent part. Also, come on. What's with this big fucking gap between the plates? You, you're going to be painting up a model for display purposes. At least join the fucking plates together. Sorry, it just hurt my obsessive compulsive side. Um, I can the extra armor over the front of the sarcophagus is fine. The plasma cannon looks like uh, I'm gonna go tau. Yeah, I'm gonna go tau. It looks like a tau weapon, like an ion cannon. Uh, I'm gonna find this because I'm gonna find it and show it and see if people agree with me or not in the comments. If anyone actually watches the video. It looks like some kind of tower weapon. Mm. A little bit like that one? No. I know. Hammerhead. Hammerhead ion cannon. Bingo. There we have it. This gun here and this gun here look very similar. Why is that? Because, I think it's because the way that's got the two shock absorbers coming out at, it forms sort of if you're looking at it end on like a Y shaped profile a Y profile and that's what this has it's upside down version of the Tau Ion Cannon and it's got the two plasma cartridges sticking directly at the bottom instead of the ion shock absorber thingies up the top here so there you go there's a bit of a Tau influence Especially because this thing looks pretty fucking Gundam, right? Looks very Gundam wing. Uh, especially, especially with like this open cockpit thing. So I'd say like the, the sources of it would be have to be like Gundam. Um, and also the walkers of the third Matrix film. Uh, was it Revolutions? Something like that. It was a bad film anyway. Um... Yeah, that's what it looks like, how it opens up and then the sarcophagus... Yeah, look, this Leviathan is an infinitely better looking model. And if they just made something like an updated, boxier version of that, it would have looked way better. Uh, possible conversions, I don't know, maybe Leviathan legs might work on the Primaris Redemptor. I kind of like the assault cannon on it, like the main big one. Does that count? Kind of? I don't know. The little rocket launch nipples look a bit stupid. They look like, again, it's this tower thing. They look like missile tower drones attached to it. And then this slapped on. This is just utterly slapped on. At least with, like, the smoke launchers when they're stuck on top of a dreadnought. You're like, yeah, okay. It makes sense that a smoke launcher like that would be slapped on. But this looks like it shouldn't be slapped on. Just, yeah, I don't know. It just I don't like this model. I think it's just... It's, it's on the cusp of being something I really like, but for all these minor, tiny, little bullshit reasons, I don't like it. Um, Alright, moving on to something else. Uh, yeah, that's expensive. <laughs> $260 for a Grav Land Raider and two characters is... <sighs> nah, bullshit. Sorry, bullshit. Alright, the aggressors. They're okay. They're okay. It's like they took... They took Centurions and they said, okay, the Centurion concept works. The models look fucking horrible with the Marine within a Marine. And they did what they should have done with Centurions in the first place, which was just take a Marine and make the armor that he's wearing the suit of armor. Um, downside is a Marine shouldn't have this much firepower because... Basically, especially because this is new technology, common sense would just be like, well, 
the reason, like, Marine armies prior to the end of the Great Crusade were considering all going to Terminator armor. Power armor was going to go the way of the Dodo, and instead all Marines would be heavily Terminator armored. But they couldn't do it because Terminator armor became much rarer and harder to produce after the heresy. Um, so that gives you an in-game reason, an in-fluff reason why you can't have Terminator armor everywhere. With these guys, this is new armor. There is no reason why they can't put every single Primaris Marine in this stuff. In which case, again, there's another bit of threat factor gone. Because if you can put every Marine into a set of almost Terminator-like armor, well, I think this is Gravius armor. Um, but if you can put every Marine into a superior set of armor to his enemies, with clearly superior firepower to his enemies, do you really feel the threat for the Marines anymore? I don't, personally. Um, I'm not a fan of the stuff because of that. Looks-wise, it's very, very fucking StarCraft. Um, disgustingly StarCraft, in fact. It's like... I think what does it is the hood or shroud that looks almost like a crappy version of a psychic hood over the top. And especially when you've got no helmet on, because it literally is just a bubble canopy away from being a StarCraft Marine. It is that fucking obvious. Which is ironic, because StarCraft Marines were inspired by 40k. For those who don't know, like... Uh, Blizzard wanted to make a Warhammer game. They wanted to make a Warhammer Fantasy and a Warhammer 40k game back in the early 90s. And Games Workshop said, nah, fuck you. Uh, so Blizzard went off and made Warcraft and Starcraft. And, well, look how that's turned out. Games Workshop and Blizzard could have been a powerful company combined together. But instead, Blizzard has gone up in leaps and bounds while Games Workshop has struggled in many ways over the years. So, interesting point of note. Uh, Primaris Reavers. I actually think I like them more in this box than the other box. I think the Skull Helmets, I don't know whether they're a different design or something, they don't seem as bad. Um, probably because they're bareheaded and not full helmeted. That might be it. Um, I still don't like how the legs have like this fat calf going on and then like a little thin shin and then this massive fat boot. So just make it one piece. You know, just make it one piece. It looks like you could paint it leather, or maybe they look like three-quarter cut-off jeans if you paint skin colour on here. Yeah. Uh, also, the harpoon guns just look fucking... fucking lame. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, we're not playing Batman Arkham Asylum here, okay? We don't need the fucking harpoon gun. It just... Come on. Come on, Case Workshop. Who's <laughs> your target audience? It's... Is it blokes in their 20s? No bloke in their 20s is going to take that fucking seriously. Oh, if it's your fanboys you're targeting, they'll fucking buy anything, so... You've got that going for you. Uh, ooh, Space Wolf Primaris Marines. So the Space Wolves have just accepted the Primaris Marines, have they? Interesting. Didn't... Very interested to see how uh, the existing chapters, like... Raven Guard, Salamanders, Space Wolves are all just going to accept these people who have no concept of their history, culture, no shared, uh, hit, no shared background. Yeah. I don't know. If they played that out in the books, that would be interesting, but I don't think... I can't give Games Workshop that much credit, can I? They won't. They won't talk about that in the books. No way. Um... See if there's any other interesting pre-orders. Yeah, no, that's it, really. Uh, these boxes cost 50% more than they used to um, in a time when inflation has gone up by about 20%. So, yeah, GG. Uh, never a good idea to make your product run away from inflation because, well, you know, People will only hang on so long and keep buying your product so long before even the die-hard fans go, nah, look, this is too much for me to afford anymore. And especially on kits that are now getting old. Like, rule of thumb, the more you produce of something, the cheaper it gets. No, really, the more you produce of something, the cheaper it gets. When you start producing jet aircraft or propeller engine aircraft, they start out being pretty costly. After you produce 30,000 of the fucking things like P-51 Mustangs or BF-109s, they become really cheap because all the tooling is paid for. All you've got to do at that point is pretty much pay for materials and wages for your workers. 
um, and the occasional like mold clean up that kind of thing and that's what these are these models have been in production since 2001 give or take um, when they bought out the mark II rhino kit so the original cost of designing that new sculpt and creating the initial molds is all gone you know that that cost that cost is fucking paid off well long ago um, so yeah these things should be getting cheaper with time not more expensive so I think that's disgusting business practice personally and I'm sure there'll be someone who likes to defend it that's the way these videos always go right but yeah key points to take away from today people don't go out and buy a hard copy codex you're just pissing your money away yes we all love looking at the pictures I mean I do it with the Horus Heresy black books but you know what the black books are like fucking 300 pages full color gilded leather bound beautiful fluff what's this space marine codex 100 pages maybe 85 data sheets wow let's let's say 100 pages if you're lucky that's fuck I'd be paying what's a black book go for at the moment from Forge World let's see seventy four pounds so about 140 bucks so next to this Space Marines gaming collection I'd be paying about twenty dollars more thirty dollars give or take with shipping to Australia from the fucking UK and I'd get I get a beautiful book leather book gilded edges silver clasps on the base a nice little bookmark and it's at least 50% fluff at least 50% fluff that I can just enjoy over and over again what's this this is an army list it's a quarter of the fucking size okay it's a waste of your money don't do it people send games workshop a fucking message boycott this sort of shit buy e-products buy the digital books don't piss your money away like honestly because that's what you're doing you're wasting your money you know it's a living rule set everyone who defends 8th edition like I, I think 8th edition is has some good things I think 7th edition had some fucked things but I am not going to sit here and say that 8th edition um, is the best edition of 40k it is demonstrably not in fact if you're gonna say there's a best edition of 40k I think you're probably looking at fifth edition or probably second edition which catered to two totally different ends of the spectrum uh, this edition of 40k it's fucking unbalanced it's pissed all over the fluff it's pissed all over the aesthetic of 40k it's gone away from like the John Blanche grim dark feel towards this cartoonish Starcrafty feel and look you're into that fine I'm not gonna tell you what you don't like I'm just gonna tell you how things have changed and that's how these things have fucking changed you know they've gone away from what made 40k unique and just turned it into yet another sci-fi game and I think that's what pisses me off most I didn't need yet another sci-fi I liked 40k because it was so fucked up in the grim darkness of the far future there is only war that worked really well for a really long time because that's a great selling point when all these other sci-fi things are about like you know Star Wars Star Trek and their utopias and yeah bad things happen but the good guys always save the day and 40k was a depressing nihilistic game where no the good guys can't always save the day in fact that made it unique that made it interesting that made it great and we're just walking away from it and people letting games workshop do it that's what blows my mind it's not even the new kits I don't hate the new kits I've got problems with them on a thematic level more than in the sculpting level um, where I do have problems is like the little rocket launches and shit on the grav tank like they're fucking lame you know they're fucking lame no one's gonna sit here and say that they're good are they yeah someone will some fucking fanboy that's the thing like be critical of games workshop I say it time and time again if you went to a movie and the movie was fucking shit would you go out and then tell everyone oh nah it's great like look it's got its flaws but I think you just need to give it a shot no you'd be like nah this movie's fucking shit 
why is it that when we say that about this game, people turn around and they're like, oh, no, you can't say that because Games Workshop tried. And they're trying to do something new. What, we're we just going to... This is not fucking everyone's included high school or something where every kid who participates in the competition, the running competition, gets a medal. You know? This is a fucking business. And a business should be doing good things. They should be doing successful things, things that the customer likes. This is the only business I know, apart from maybe Apple, where they fuck the customer and the customer just takes it. And they're like, yeah, yeah, give, give me more Games Workshop, give me more of this fucking piss. Where the customer doesn't turn around saying, like, you know, look, this is a bad idea. And part of the problem is, is there were a group of people who did do that to Games Workshop, who did, you know, say no and voted with their wallets. And that was back in about second, third edition, because Games Workshop back then, very short time, brought out a policy where basically if you didn't have the up-to-date kit, you couldn't play the model. So it's like if a new sculpt got released for, say, Space Marines, and they went from metal Space Marines to plastic, they go, no, nah, you have to play with the current model. The other ones have been superseded. You wouldn't believe how many fucking people quit 40k overnight when they made that decision. Uh, yeah, like, probably about 30%, 40%, maybe even 50% of everyone I knew playing the hobby quit. I don't know whether it was Australia-specific, store-specific, but... There was a period of time there where that was the policy. Uh, at the same time, they used to have a policy in Games Workshop where... And it was one of the better ones. Fully painted or you couldn't play it. And not anymore. About seven or eight years back, they turned around and said, Yeah, nah, all your shit. Just put it on the table. Who cares if it's not painted? And they've allowed this dilution of the hobby where it's just like any shit cunt can just come in now and play with whatever they've got. And it's just like... Piece by piece, Games Workshop and the players have done something to this game. This once pretty beautiful game, um, where just bit by bit they've eroded it. Because once they started winning in, you know, shit painted models, and the more we let power creep come into the game with the codexes, and the more people abused the power creep. Because, you know, there's two sides to every story. The more people abused that power creep, the, the more games workshop, you know, they went, oh, fuck, Granite sold really well. We need to bring out more books like this. And, and and one fed the other. And it created the problems we have now with 40K, where people rock up with fucking baby doll titans. I mean, baby doll titans, come on. Like, there are people, like, there's one guy here in Australia who uses chicken bones and a fucking baby doll. Like, like fucking 14-inch tall little girls baby dolls from a toy shop and he just covers them in like chicken bones and fucking spack filler and weird shit gives them terrible paint jobs that like a Jackson Pollock painting makes more sense than these fucking paint jobs and they are literally revolting and we accept that we accept that shit in this hobby now why the fuck like if you were playing flames of war would you accept it if someone rocked up and they put down a bunch of fucking cockroaches on the table and said, yeah, no, they're panzers, man. No, you wouldn't accept it. So why the fuck do we accept it with Games Workshop? Yeah, you can have fun with Games Workshop. You can convert and do things outside the box. You can have um, Tomb King's parts. You can have fucking, I don't know, Necron parts and combine Necron parts with Mechanicum to make weird walkers and stuff. That shit's normal. But there's a line in there somewhere. You know, I don't know the exact point that line is. Probably the point where you're using parts of a cooked chicken you pulled out of a dumpster to make a fucking titan. That might be where the line is. Maybe even a little bit earlier than that. But it all started with just a few bad decisions by Games Workshop and a few bad people acting on those decisions. This is a hobby, and every hobby has fucking standards, and people need to learn those fucking standards. I mean, this is just turned from a scrub down to a rant, but it needed to be said. Take some fucking pride in your work, and if you paint shit, and you ask for people to give you feedback, and they say you've done a bad job for these reasons, take it on board. Don't just turn around and say, oh, yeah, nah, but, well, it's not actually shit because, like, reasons. Just, oh, yeah, okay, cool, I didn't thin my paints. Okay, I shouldn't have used chicken bones in a model. Oh, yeah, I shouldn't paint using my own feces. 
you know, just little fucking things like that. Because, yeah, this is a hobby. Um, and people, like, I know Cat will argue that it's art. It's not art. This is a hobby. And a hobby has established left and rights of what you can and can't do. And it's basically... This here is the ideal version of the hobby according to Games Workshop. The model is built this way and painted similar to this. That's their ideal version of the hobby. And you could paint something like the Leviathan here with like weathering and stuff like that. And that's also inside the spectrum of the hobby. And you could paint non-metallics and that's inside the spectrum of the hobby. But when you start using like bodily fluids and saying like it's an artistic expression of oneself, no, it's not. It's just fucking stupid and people should be called on that shit. Like why are we so fucking accepting of just, there are so many bad people in this community. And it's gone to the point where you can't even criticize people for being shit because we're so inclusive as a community. Like go on a page like 40k for grown ups and you'll see what fucking cancerous community you're in because they've just let everything go. The everyone gets a medal mentality where like the worst fucking models imaginable are just celebrated. And people who give legitimate constructive feedback that would actually help this person to be better at what they're doing are frowned upon because they're not saying nice things. And that's just fucking pathetic. And it probably all can be traced back to Games Workshop. Funny enough, when they first made that decision to just let people play on their tables with unpainted shit. Because part of this game was you encouraged people to paint their shit by saying you can't play it until it's painted. And then people would go, oh fuck, I have to get off my lazy ass and actually paint. And if you're playing at home, play with your grey models. No one's taking that away from you. But the Games Workshop sh stores is where we sort of should be showing some of the best aspects of this hobby. And we're not. We're showing some of the worst. You go in there and there's teenagers playing whack faggot lists. And that's lists. A whack faggot, by the way, for those who aren't used to earlier videos, is basically someone who is playing a win at all costs list. They don't care about having fun as such or the other person they're playing's entertainment. They only care about them winning the game no matter what. As the worst fucking attitude ever. It's not competitive chess. It's a fucking hobby, okay? Again, that left and right of arc. And there's fucking 12-year-olds playing whack faggot lists with unpainted shit, hardly even, often shit's not even fully built. It's covered in mold lines, covered in clipping marks, and we let that shit slide. If you're going to play like that, play it at home. Don't play it in a games workshop, because then other people come in, they're interested in staying in the hobby, and they see that, and they think that that's the acceptable behavior. So, Fuck. If there's anything you've got out of today, it's lead by example. I always paint my shit. I work 50 to 60 hours a week. I have a partner. I have a dog. I have a fucking mortgage. I have a house that needs its lawns mode. I have to look after machinery. I actually run another business on the side in my spare time. I also find time to go paintballing. I find time to go do car racing, things like that. All of which eat up money. Yet, yeah, I still find a way to save up and buy models. I still find a way to... Um, paint all my shit and if I can do it so many other people can anyway I'm back with the outer circle I hope you enjoyed this not scrub down for the weird wonderful ranting raving thing it was and leave all the hatred in the comments below and I'll see you all next time